What's up everybody, it's 5 a.m. and I am only up because I'm going to catch a flight over to Chicago. I'll take a car from there over to Iowa and then up to Wisconsin and the reason I'm doing it is because I still gotta hit my 50 states. Let's go. First stop on the two states I'm gonna knock off, Iowa and Wisconsin. I'm over in Dubuque. I got the Mississippi River behind me. There was a slight delay this morning on getting out of the airport because they couldn't figure out the car rental situation, but I finally made it out here. So why am I up here in the first place? I'm coming up to Wisconsin for a wedding this weekend and I had to follow one of my own rules and that's actually if I am close to a state that I haven't hit yet, gotta make sure I mark it up the list. So that is why I'm actually in Iowa and Dubuque was one of the closest ones. I flew into Chicago, rented a car, drove up to Dubuque. We'll probably hit one more spot and then I'm gonna head over to Milwaukee. So today I'm gonna be sharing three hacks that I have picked up, that I have learned, that I have used for hitting 50 staters for those that wanna actually also hit the 50 stater list. And the first one I'm actually talking about is get creative with the way you use your points. So let me go ahead and explain that. When I booked my flight, out here it was actually just using Alaska Airlines to get up to here and it actually was one of their partners American Airlines I had to pay like $18 for the flight with that said I spent most of my points to get out here my remaining points with Alaska so what I did was when I booked my Seattle trip next week it's a trip from Orlando over to Seattle Washington Seattle Washington back I actually called into the airline and I found out that one way was actually more expensive than the other and it was actually Seattle to Orlando, so this is what I did. I found out that the Seattle to Orlando trip was $428, and Orlando to Seattle was about $300, and I had a companion fare left, so $99 companion fare, as long as I bought the ticket. So what do I do? I called up the airline, I found a way to essentially pay points for one way, and then I bought one of the flights with somebody else, and I split the difference using that companion fare. It realistically saved me probably about $180, so using a combination of maybe points for a one-way ticket and then buying a ticket on the way back in cash that's actually gonna be cheaper. Only way you're gonna find that out is actually calling up. The second tip I'm talking about is actually cost hacking when it comes to lodging. Lodging is the second most expensive piece outside of the actual travel for when you're trying to hit these 50 states. So there are a lot of different ways to do this. I've talked about points, but I think one of the more creative ways to do this, one, know a friend that you can stay with. I think that's one of the easiest ways to do it. If you wanna couch surf and you have good friends in a state that you haven't really visited, maybe they moved out there, give them a call, shoot them a text, buy them dinner and go stay on their couch. The other piece to that is if they are a friend and they have discounts at hotels, if you have friends that actually are working in the hospitality industry and can get you a discount, give them a call, treat them to dinner, say please hook me up and sure enough they'll be able to help you out with a lot cheaper rates. I've had that happen before where somebody works at a hotel and has gotten me a discounted rate at the hotel versus the hundred dollar or hundred and fifty dollar rate. And the last piece to actually hacking for lodging is to do research. I am going up to a wedding in Wisconsin on Saturday so I'm actually coming up for the wedding. There's a block of hotel rooms for the wedding, which is completely fine. But what I still did was looked at the wedding, looked at the venue, and I found out that there are a ton of Airbnbs. And if it's just me, typically you can find an Airbnb that's going to be cheaper than the actual wedding block itself, even if you have some really cool discounts. So there's three pieces to hack number two. One, couch surfing, save some money. Sounds obvious, but you might not even think about it that you know somebody in the city. Number two is take it to the next level. Somebody that actually knows the hospitality industry that works in a hotel that gets you a discount. Jump at it. And number three is to actually just do your research. Look at the venue if you're going to a specific spot for this vacation, for this state, and go see if there's Airbnbs or something cheaper than what you're planning on doing. So hack number three comes from my experience as a road warrior, selling on the road, living in hotels for a very long time. I think one year I spent 261 days in a hotel for my sales job. So not only did I get really good at packing a suitcase, but I got really good at making sure my life fit inside of a carry-on. Number three is a tip on learning how to pack your life into a carry-on and a backpack. 
A couple of things that I would normally do is if I am going to make sure that I'm getting dressed up, I would pack my chucks, so Converse, and maybe boots or sandals, and then I'd always wear my dress shoes on me. Why? Because dress shoes are not as flexible as your Converse or your sandals or sometimes even your boots. A lot of those can fit inside your carry-on and you would wear the more rigid shoe. Do it all the time. Another piece there is outerwear. When I went to South America, I did have to bring a jacket because it was gonna get cold in some of the areas, and so I actually wore my jacket on the outside, packed one extra jacket on top of that, and then I wore my one pair of jeans. The last piece that I actually wearing your clothes is something when it comes to like a sport jacket or dress clothes. If I was actually going to some kind of a meeting and I had to wear a sport jacket, I would actually wear my sport coat and my dress shoes with some jeans and a shirt, and I would be able to save more room in my actual carry on. The other piece of this, and this might be something that you are aware of already, but this is something I learned when I finally started traveling for work, and is actually to roll your clothes into these like hot dog shaped shapes and put them in your suitcase. It actually makes it number one less wrinkled and number two they're actually going to take up less space i use a pretty small to me case to roll around in when i travel and it has always worked for me all the stuff that i'm saying right now is super realistic i've actually done it i spent 30 days in south america with hiking boots outerwear jeans hats coats and then camera gear all for 30 days in South America. I spent a lot of time outside. I did spend time dressed up as well. So I had to have a lot or a large range of clothes as well. I made it and I only had to wash clothes one time, which is the last piece to that. You want to hit a couple of states over two weeks and you got to live out of this carry on bag. Cool. Bring a dirty clothes bag and go wash your clothes one time. It's pretty cheap, probably about $2.50, maybe another $2.50, so $5 total to actually go and get all your clothes washed. And of course, now you have a brand new bag for another two weeks. That's all I got for you guys for this particular 50 stater trip. Three different hacks this time. The very first one is to make sure that you're getting creative with those brands that you have committed to. Make sure you give them a call and figure out how you can use your points to the best of their potential, not just using points at any chance you get. Number two is to hack on the second most expensive piece to any kind of travel and that is actually lodging. Check with your friends, see if somebody's actually living in that city, check with your friends if they work for a hotel now to get you a discount, and lastly just do your research and figure out if any kind of Airbnb is cheaper than something you already have originally set up. And the last one is to get super creative with the way you pack your carry-ons. Learn how to pack your entire life into your carry-on and it's gonna be a lot cheaper for you to hit all these 50 states. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope these three hacks do help you and allow you to maybe think a little more into your travel and see if they can actually help save a little bit of money for your travel. This is Iowa, I still have Wisconsin to go and I can't wait to share the Seattle content I'll have for you in a little bit. We are going on motorcycles. Hope you guys have a great weekend. See ya.